what is up you guys welcome back to my youtube channel we are back with part six of surviving my childhood abuse now this series is almost over um but i do want to thank you guys for listening to my trauma and though it doesn't get specific and if you guys do want to read the specific parts on really what happened in my childhood trauma because i know i was like mm, not too much details because we are on youtube and we have to watch what we say um i will be writing my own book about my life and it will get into details and things that really did go on specific details so if you do want to know the specific details i will be writing a book I'm not going to be out this year but i will be working on my book this year and hopefully can get it out within the next two years because it's it, it's going to be a long book to write and a lot of emotional turmoil while turmoil while watching while not watching while writing this book because just talking about my story is also emotional before we get into my junior year because i'm out and proud i wanted to get back to being 13. i forgot to talk about this but there was a time where my mom's best friend was over and i didn't talk about this because i was i was like should i talk about it mm, whatever uh, my mom's best friend was over and uh she, we had me and my mom had gotten in an argument she was in the kitchen she came out and she hit me with the spatula then threw me on the floor and just started punching me in the face and she was on top of me and just like basically fighting me like i was some girl on the streets and she was like punching me over and over i was covering my face and she was just like, you really want to know what's up? Da, 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 da. And I was like, stop, stop. And I kept telling her, stop, like, I'm your daughter. Like, I'm not your father. I kept telling her to stop because, you know, my own mother has her own abuse as well. And she wouldn't stop. And um, I asked her friend for help. Her friend just stood there and watched. And she's like, I can't help you. Yeah. There was also a time where, while I was 13, I didn't get into specifics because I was scared. Um, I was in the shower, I was naked, and she went, she waited till I got in the shower, the door was unlocked, and she went in there, and she beat my ASS with a belt while I was in the shower. When I tell you I ran, I, I, I looked like a, a flopping fish trying to get out that shower and run to my room. Um, yeah, but that happened. I don't even know why she went in the shower. Maybe I, like, I stood out too late, or like me and my siblings got into a fight or something. I really do not even remember why I got beat, honestly. Um, <laughs> be honest. Anyways, those were just uh, two little stories right there while I was 13. Now let's get back. We're going into junior year. I'm out and I'm proud, okay? I've had my experiences with some girls, you know what I'm saying? Now this is around the time where junior year <laughs> i start like just like experimenting with things you know yes i would get hit by my mom and like we would get in fights and arguments and stuff like that but i was also like i said i got into smoking meth with one of the neighbors and then started smoking weed it started going out um that's the time where i started going out drinking and my mom would buy me alcohol i went to my first um I went to my first high school kickback and I never got invited to one ever again. And let me tell you why. I was the worst drunk in my life. Okay. Um, the tequila I came with is the tequila I left with. Okay. I'm just going to say that. I, I finished that bottle and my friend gave me mixed drinks, like five cups of mixed drinks, then beer. And like, I don't even, I think I was trying to eat bread or water or whatever. And I threw up on their carpet. I threw up all over their bathroom toilet. I threw up outside. It was very bad. My mom was going to a party that night. She's the one who bought me the alcohol and took me to the kickback. That's the crazy part. She took me to the kickback and got me the alcohol. And then uh, I was 16. So, yeah. And so I wasn't even at the party for like two hours until I was crop faced and my mom had to pick me up and they had to drag me in the car and they drove me away. I blacked out on my way home. I knew I got in the car, but the rest was a blur. She said she took me home. She just threw me on the floor on the air mattress and I throw up all over me. She didn't take off my shoes. She didn't take off anything. She just left me on the floor with puke all over me. 
and left me home alone. I, my siblings weren't home. Nobody was home. She just left me in the house there. I woke up in the morning so scared because I didn't know where I was. I was like blacked out drunk. I was like, how did I get home? I was like looking for my phone because I didn't know where my phone was. It was a flip phone. And I was like, where the heck am I? Like, And then I was like, oh, shoot, I'm home. And I called and I was like, where are you at? And she's like, oh, we're at my friend's house or whatever. I was like, how did I get home? She's like, I took you home. And like, I woke up so scared. Yeah, I'm a teenager and I made like reckless decisions going out, but she dropped me off and just left me home alone. Your daughter is crap face drunk. The lock doesn't even work at the house that we're at. We're on the south side now. Our, we have no doors in our house. The front door doesn't even lock. We're using shoelace and like tying the door closed to keep it locked. It doesn't have a doorknob. So I'm sitting here like, what the heck? Anyways, this is Walmart keep parting. I got to my, I got to go to my first, um, oh, this is around the time too, it was 2015. This is around the time when gay marriage was finally legalized and I was so excited. We went to a uh, rainbow pride and then I went to my friend's house and um, we hung out and then we went, one of my friends had slept over around that time. And this is around the time where some stuff happened. And he was a grown man and he slept with my friend and I slept with my friend and things happened. I mean, it was, I just didn't want him to touch me, but he was a family friend and he was a grown man. He was like 28 and we were 17 and 16. So yeah stuff happened and we were we got drunk with a fireball and me and her and she kept trying to like add hints to me and i was like no you're not like you do not really like me like that and she was like stop being scared i was basically peer pressured into the things that we did that night i didn't want to i even told her i didn't want to she's like come on stop being scary like da 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 let's go da 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 and then eventually my brother caught us in the bathroom and he snitched on us in the morning and he only caught me and the girl though he didn't catch the dude that was behind the girl and so that happened and I got in trouble that next morning and I, I had a hickey on my neck and she told me that my friend needed to go home and I was like okay <laughs> so that happened um I'll, I'll get a deeper story into that this is my junior year I was like I said I was experimenting and um we were just doing all types of crazy stuff then um into that year we went to another this is i oh, i got in a relationship with some girl for a month and you know, like it literally lasted a month they didn't even know i'll ask the whole freaking it was a month and we broke up and she said that um she didn't like that i was too girly and that i needed to be boy, more boyish like why wasn't i more manly like excuse me for being a girl this is my, like, and I, she was bisexual, but this is my first time ever, like, I started, like, get, getting into a relationship with girls, but this is where it started. And I hated the fact that, that just because I was dressing more masculine, that girls expected me to be more manly. Like, um, I am a woman, okay? I'm a woman getting with a woman. Please, let's be clear. I'm not one of those women who's like, oh, I'm a man 24-7, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm a girl. I'm a girl who likes girls, period. When these clothes come off, I'm a whole woman, okay? So anyways, <laughs> I kept partying with friends and like we would get drunk. Then I got in a relationship with a girl my, during my junior year. And this girl was my age. And uh, that relationship was very abusive and toxic. She was also schizophrenic. It was like... I was attracting versions of my mother. You know how you attract your usually your parents or who you adapt or whatever. And she was very abusive. Even from the beginning, I knew she was like cheating and I would catch the messages and she would like manipulate and gaslight me and be like, oh no, you didn't see what you saw. And I was so easily manipulated because I was so young. So I was easily gaslight, easily manipulated. I've been getting through my whole life. So it's like, Oh, okay, you know? And so she was like, I'm sorry. She's like, that's not that's not what you mean. It was my ex. Da, 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 da. Like, I'm not talking to her. No, I want to be with you. And I was like, 
what? And I was like, I don't, I'm not going to deal with this cheating stuff. And I told her, I was like, I'm not going to deal with this cheating stuff. No, da, 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 da. And then she like switched it up on me. I don't know what she said. I, I just, I just know that like, it didn't make no sense to me, but I remember. And then we would get into arguments and she would fight and we would break up and I would cry. And then she would tell me, I'll get back with you, but you got to beg for me. She would literally make me get on my knees and beg for her back. But we're the same age, so I can't really hold her accountable. But, like, she would literally make me get on my knees and tell her, beg for me, and then I'll, like, take you back or whatever. And she would make me there, like, sit on my knees and beg or whatever, whatever the hell it was. And her mom used to smoke us out. And, like, her mom would smoke, right? Her mom used to sell as well. And her mom would smoke us out or whatever. I remember her mom would also sell. And then she would tell me, like, you want to help, like, you know, because we need money or whatever. And I was like, yeah. You know me, I'm a person, like, I don't care, like, if we got to make money, if I got to help you, if I'm staying with you and I got to help you with money and stuff like that, like, okay, I, I would sell. This is a time where I had moved into, after my junior year, during, like, during my, during the summer of my, going into my senior year, I had moved in with her and it got really abusive, like, she would hit me, I caught her cheating during that summer or whatever, and I was gonna leave her, and she, she begged for me, she got on her knees, and it was so really weird and awkward because she was so abusive, she's also punched me in my face, and, like, pushed me and shoved me, like, on the ground, and, like, I shoved her back to get her off of me, like, yo, get off of me, and she punched me, and, like, she was scared I was going to hit her. And I was like, I'm not going to hit you. Just please move. And I, I would try to walk away and grab some space because, like, I can't believe someone that I really cared about or loved at, at the time really just put their hands on me. And so um, she, like, really pushed me in my face. That's crazy. I came up. Whew, I should have left right there and then. No, you know, I should have fought her. But I didn't. I fought her at the end of our relationship. I finally hit her back. I got my lick back. Okay, not gonna lie. I got my lick back. It was very toxic, very abusive. But I was holding in all that anger and holding in all that resentment that during the last straw, I just exploded. It was like this fire within me who was like, I'm I'm coming in for all my licks, every single one. I didn't care. She cheated on me around like 14 times, y'all. And we were like, all, we were on and off. Like she would break up with me and then she would like, then we would pretend to be together. We were not together. And while she was cheating on me, I brought this girl. Um, I texted this girl because we weren't together, but she she got jealous. She knew something was up. She got jealous. This girl took me to the, um, where did she take me? To the 13th floor. And I was telling her this girl how much like a, abusive like my ex was or or the current girl I was talking to or whatever or, or the girl that I was living with but we were exes or whatever and she's like you don't deserve to go through that like and she had the same birthday as my, the girl that I was with so it was it was crazy but um like I said it was abusive her mom would make me like we like sell pre-rolls at school 16, you know what I'm saying? Pre-rolls. I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I just turned 17, so I'm in my, my senior year. I'm selling pre-rolls at school. I grabbed some, like, this girl. She was an adult, though. Um, she didn't know that I was, like, only 17. and She was, like, 19 or 20. And so, yeah, me and her hung out. She flirted with me. And I just felt awkward because I didn't like the – I, yeah, I wasn't with my ex, but, like, feeling like I was, like, flirting with someone else – and had someone else at home just did not sit right with me at all whatsoever so I was like very awkward it out and I was just like I don't think I can do this like I don't think I could go through with this because this girl kept flirting with me and like she would send me videos and I would like mm, I was hesitant like I was feeling the girl but I was like no I don't feel good about this like I don't just I just don't feel good about this so I just blocked the girl and just moved on with my life eventually I unblocked her later on but that just goes to show. Turns out, too, um, I had a best friend who was a guy. Well, I called him my best friend. He was, uh, I wasn't his best friend, but um, he moved in with my ex because he was homeless. And then uh, we ended up, like, he ended up catching feelings for her. This girl, she was also talking, my ex was also talking to another girl, right, behind my back, and I caught on to it. And then we went to a party that night during New Year, before New Year's, before the party though, before the New Year's party or whatever. Um, I had, I was, I had went to the South Side and we were just chilling and down, 
on like 24th street and that's where the hood if y'all don't know that that's where like or 7th street 24th street, or whatever that's where the hood was or whatever and um was it 48th street i don't know anyway we were in the hood and we were just chilling and i was with like apparently you know that that girl that i called sister we were just chilling and one of the girls got out of got a jail and we were just chilling because i ain't seen her in a minute and um the other guy he just got out of prison and he told me he does tattoos this is a family friend that we also knew since I was like 11, all right? And so this dude or whatever, he's like, yeah, you know, come through. Like, you could just come over to my place. We chill there. His truck ended up breaking down on the way to his place. I think it was a sign. The universe was like trying to sign like, yo. And uh, some couple picked us up because we were like, we were like looking for a ride or whatever. And they he told them that I was his little sister. Dude gave us a beer and stuff like that. <laughs> and so uh, they dropped us off at his house. And that night he was drunk. He was already drunk. Like I wasn't even like drunk because I didn't really drink the beer. I was just like, whatever. I just, I don't know. I didn't want it like that. And um, I wanted to be coherent because, you know, I don't really trust guys like that. Uh, he's like, you can lay on that side. You know what I'm saying? I'll lay on this side. I was like, okay, cool. And so I lay down. Then this dude tried like, he went behind me. He tried like groping on me and touching me. And he's like, you know, you ain't young anymore. You know, like you're pretty grown or whatever. And I said, I was like, stop. Like, don't touch me. You know, get off of me. And like, it made me freeze up again, like that time. And I was like, stop. And he was like, what's up, you know? And he kept trying to touch up on me. And I was like, stop. And like, and I would like put, I was pushing him off. This is a grown dude, grown dude. Before that too, not too long ago, that same dude that had SC, you know, X with me, my, my friend. And like, well, obviously he wasn't, I didn't him touch me. Like I would push him off. Um, he was, all, he also touched me while I was sleeping. And he tried to lie to my mom saying that he was trying to grab my phone. Damn lie. Like, who would try to grab a phone from a girl's behind? Like, make it make sense. When you lie, y'all got to have better lies because that's, that's weird. But anyways, back to me being in his house saying he was a tattoo artist and he was going to do my tattoo. And I was like, move, get off, you know. And I kept, like, trying to, like, push him off. And he kept touching me and it was just like making me like freeze. I couldn't move. You know, when your body's like frozen, that's what it felt like. And eventually like I, I pushed him off. I was like, you got a bathroom? I got to go use the bathroom. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's over there. So like I grabbed my, I grabbed my bag because I think I had my backpack or I don't even know what I had with me. And I pretended to go to the bathroom and I just like walked out the house and I just ran. I ran to the park. I slept at the, like, I slept at the neighborhood park that night. It was like three or four in the morning, whatever. And I waited till six in the morning till buses were running again to go back home to the South side. And never again did I ever go back to that area or whatever. And that happened. Um, then I went to my ex's house and I was crying about what happened. And she's like, She's like, I don't know what to do. Like, I was like, I just want you to hold me. Like, I'm not trying to have you fix me or anything like that. Like, I just need to held. A couple of days later, it's New Year's, and we're going to a New Year's party. So we went to, this is when I first went to, um, when I started party promoting. I was 17 during the summer. I went to that, I went to that hookah lounge because that's where we got invited to. And so we went and... We had fun out there and I dressed up or whatever. I had a job already, minus I'm working, I'm, I'm working at um, TKS, Turnkey Solutions at this telemarketing place. And uh, this is not too far or whatever. And I, I had gotten, obviously I had gotten my, I had went back home with my mom during winter break and we had gotten in a big fight. And before the summer we had gotten in a big fight too. And she like hit me and she like, pulled my hair saying she didn't want she didn't want to give me my birth certificate obvious this is out of order obviously you guys so I'm just going back and forth just remembering as I'm talking and she was she like freaking pulled my hair and just hit me and then right the last time that I lived with my mom was when we got in a really big fight my brother threw a dvd she threw she told my brother my brother the one who's like almost my age and he's autistic to throw a DVD player at my face. And so he threw it and I blacked out. And like, I, it was on the bed, I was on the top of the bunk bed because I was trying to dodge it. And I blacked out and I got up and I went after him because I was like, I was fuming with anger. 
And she kept trying to block him, like, no, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, he want to act all tough behind you. And like, I was ready to scrap. This is the first time I ever laid my hands on my mother. I was 17 and a half is the very first time I ever put my hands. When I say I had so much anger built up inside me, I had so much anger built up inside me. It's my first time ever putting my hands. I punched my mom in the stomach. That's the worst that it got. But I wanted to do way worse. Like, I imagine, like, how people built up this anger of their parents. And I did. I had this anger built up. And I just went in and I just hit her. And I hit her once, but I kept pushing her. But, like, I hit her once and she, like, hit me back or whatever. I didn't care. And she, like, dragged me by my hair. I don't care. I got my hit and whatever. And I walked out. She's like, don't ever come back or I'm calling the police. So she kicked me out and told me to never come back or she's going to call the police. So I went across the street with the neighbors. Um, but the neighbor was a crackhead too. The, we were on the south side. The neighbor was a crackhead and she told me to go. Like she said, she'll, she'll let me stay here. So my ex, my ex's mom picked me up and my ex's mom said if she ever puts her hands on me again, that she was going to beat my mom's ASS or whatever. So that stuff happened. I'm back at my ex's house. Um, well, we're, we're at the time we were like, I don't know what we were, but we acted like we were together and she was trying to make up for the fact that she's been cheating on me and the best friend that she was talking to, she was actually like dating and her little sister would tell, tell on her and was like, Mary, like, like, like she's talking to other people. And I was like, really, what did you hear? And the little sister, she loved me. She loved me. Like I took care of her and everything. We were also raising a baby together. And um, while we were together and that being abusive, we were raising a baby together who was her sister's. Um, me and her sister, God, we did, we did, we also did meth together because her sister was a like a drug addict and she offered me some. And so I did some because I was trying to like get her to open up about what she was doing because she was trying to take her baby back. But I was like, is she doing drugs? So I did it with her once. And I wanted to see if she was still doing it because I wasn't going to let her take the baby that we've been raising or whatever. So I'm also being a parent at this time, raising somebody else's child with another girl who's abusive. Um, I didn't like how she would hit the baby either. And like, it was, it was bad. It was all bad. It was all freaking toxic in every shape, way, or form. So we're in this abusive relationship. It's New Year's. Um, she leaves me at the club. The girl that picks her up, she tells me, I don't want you to call me baby. I don't want you to hold me. I don't want you to sit on, I don't want, I'm not going to sit on your lap. Don't touch me. Don't call me baby. Um, my friend doesn't like that. And I was like, what? the hell what do you mean your friend is not like that I was like are you kidding me apparently this friend is the one that she was talking to and um yeah and I was like you know what whatever so she left me at the party and I was crying and I was like are you really gonna leave me here like are you kidding me babe and I was like I was just like telling her and she's like why she's like stop calling me babe like why are you calling me babe like da da da, da. and she's like just leave her and then she really just left me there I was like, whatever. I cried. I called my family friend that we stood with and I had um, her husband pick me up and they took me to the house and I grabbed all my stuff and I was like, I'm never going back here again. So like I left, we were broken up for like, I think two weeks and I was still working and then we got back together. Um, and that's when my ex best friend announced that he had feelings for her. And he like around that, that night on New Year's after she left me at the party after that day, like he was living with her. And I went and I was like, are you serious? Like you see what the hell we're going through and you're just going to out and burst that. He's like, I know like she never gave me no type of sign, but like I'm having feelings for her, whatever. I was like, bro, you're weird. You're freaking weird. Like we, I offer you a hand and like you do this, like you're foul for that. And so like, um that happened and so we're not together or whatever and then we ended up getting back together two more weeks later after i cried bawled my eyes out and then um i don't believe her like i don't believe that she's being loyal or whatever i make a fake instagram account because this time i'm 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 toxic at this point like i'm i'm beyond toxic i make a fake instagram account i message her from it and i holler at her and i flirt with her and she says she's with this rapper from wisconsin or whatever like that and i'm like you had to be out your mother mine and i text her and i was like are you serious you're what a rapper for da, da, da. and like after she admitted whatever like what she was flirting and i have all the, i wanted all the proof after i have all the proof because i had proof before 
But after I have the proof now, oh, man, this is the time that I explode. I get to work. I'm heated. I'll t I'm talking to my friends. I was like, I'm about to beat this. Da 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 da. And I was like, I was just so angry. I had so much anger built up inside me, so much anger built up in general from everything. And it wasn't just her. It was just all these things that I've put myself through that, that like I went through, like is all coming up. And I feel this anger, this hate. And I was like, I'm going to beat her ASS or whatever. I call her and I was like, shut up. And then she called me a B-I-T-C-H. And she told me, what's up, run up, whatever. You ain't going to do nothing. She told me I wasn't about it. And I said, you know what? I right, watch when I pull up. She thought I was lying. She thought I wasn't going to pull up or whatever. I'm screaming at her because we're at lunch while I'm at work. We're at lunch at this point. We, we always before we clocked in or something or we just clocked in and we went to lunch on break or whatever. And my friends are over there. They're smoking a big one. And I told them and they're like, come here. And they told me they hit a couple, you know, whatever hits. I need to calm down or whatever. I was I'm about to fight her. So I told one of the homies, I was like, yo, Anybody can take me to our house. I told them, look, I even told them I'll pay them when I get paid. I'll give them gas. I ain't got gas right now, but I'll pay them when I get paid. And he's like, I got you. One of the dudes, he was a real one too. He drove me all the way to Avondale. We was all up in Phoenix. He drove me all the way to Avondale just to beat my ex's ASS. Dude drove all the way down there and I was lit. I was lit. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty, pretty high. Um, I was slow than a mofo, but <laughs> when we got there, she didn't know I was going to come. I knocked on the door. We were at the, it was her trailer or whatever. We knocked on the door. I got, listen, if I describe the details, I really, I fought her. I fought her brother and I, cause her brother was down. He just got out of jail as well. Her brother was down there and so was my ex best friend. I fought all three of them while being lit. Okay, if you want to know the fighting story, I'll tell you all the fighting story, but in a, in, a, in a different video. So that happened. I beat, I beat her up like it was over. We were done. I, I got domestic and her mom tried to threaten saying that she was going to call the cops. I said, call the cops. Tell them what I, please call the cops. And I told them if she calls the cops, I was going to tell them how she sells da 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 and how, how she has a kid here who's supposed to be in CPS custody or whatever. I didn't care at this point. I'm going to use all, you know what I'm saying? You want to you wanna do stuff, do me dirty, I'm going to do you dirty because I've been paying your bills too, man. I've been handing you money. Like, I'm a teenager and I'm handing you money to help you with your bills. I'm paying your daughter stuff, da 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 So I was really pissed. I was just, I was on fire. Like, and like, her, uh, like I saw how her mom would call me a B word behind my back and I would see their text messages like and then would try to be all nice to me in front in front of my face like no like that's weird you get what I'm saying I don't care what type of stuff that we were on but like you pretended to be nice in my face and then talk crap behind my back I don't play that like that was not me and back then I was just I was such in a toxic place I was so hurt I was so like I had been through so much like I just keep going through things and I'm like dang you know what I'm saying I'm still 17, 17 and a half, and it's, it's around February. Um, yeah, I'm living with a family friend. Um, I was paying, paying them some money while I was working, but they told me if I was failing my classes and I didn't, you know, um, that I could just not pay them. I didn't have to have a job. They just wanted me to graduate. They really, want, they really tried to push me to graduate they, because I was failing my classes, okay? After after that breakup, um, I just I was in such a toxic mindset. I was talking to different girls. I talked back to that girl that I stopped talking to, who took me to 13th floor. Stuff happened with her. I'm partying every weekend. I'm doing party promotions. My friend who's at school, he was supposed to be my best friend. He got me, and this is this is when the addiction is bad. I'm smoking, I'm drinking. And my friend offers me, because I, I keep being late in the first period. I'm tired. I told him, like, yo, I can't stay up. Like, I'm working and going to school. Like, how am I going to make this work? And he's like, I got something for you. He introduces me to cocaine. This was a start of something very dangerous.
Cocaine was my very first drug that I have ever been extremely addicted to. It was a very addictive drug. Um, he's like, we'll go hot. When you get a paycheck, we'll go half on it, like on an eight ball. So we did. And um, we would skip, uh, we would skip during class and we, he would, we would meet in the theater room or something. And he was like, hey, yo, you want to meet in the theater room and hit a couple of bumps or whatever? And I was like, yo, I'm down. So we would go throughout, throughout the school and we'll like hit it back and forth. And we would do it all the time in school. And he would carry it on him. And then one time, like I, I had him like just like cut it in half. So I had some and he had some or whatever. And uh, we just will buy every time we ran out, we'll buy more or whatever. Uh, he also did at home tattoos. So he did some of my tattoos. And so like, I started getting my grades up. This is around the time where even things got worse. If you couldn't think about anything worse, remember I told you I had my foster dad who was an amazing foster dad. Um, and um, I would spend time with him. We would spend quality time and we spent Christmas together as well. Um, during this time as I was partying, doing all this stuff, I call him because it's my last concert. My senior year, I'm having my last choir concert. I'm trying to apply to have a have my own vocal or whatever. I have my own solo during my senior year. And he was like, and I called him and I said, hey, dad. I called him the night before anything happened. I said, hey, dad, um, I'm having my last concert. I really want you to come. It's on Monday. He, he died three or four days, three days, three, four days right before my final concert. And I asked him or if he can make it to my graduation in the concert that I was having. And I was like, hey, dad, I was like, I'm calling. I'm leaving a message like I love you. I know he was at work. I love you. I just want to let you know that um, I'm having a concert. He didn't call me that night. No, it was on the night. Actually, it was on the night that he was killed by a hit and run that I called him and left a message. And um, I was called the next day by my stepmom his wife and she was crying it was her best friend and she was crying her best friend was like hey um is this the right time or whatever and I was like what do you mean and and I was like where's my dad because she's calling me from my dad's phone I was like where's my dad and she's like he's gone I said haha like that's like like I was just like I wasn't so shocked and I was like haha that's very funny like stop playing with me and I was like where where's my dad? And he's like, no, honey. She was like, no, honey, I'm, I'm serious. And so my stepmom grabbed the phone and she's bawling her eyes out. She was like, it's true. And I was like, stop. And so I dropped down to the, to the floor and I was bawling my eyes out, like in the midst of everything that's going on, like this happens right before three weeks, three or four weeks, right before my graduation. And right a couple days before my final concert, I'm failing every class in the school. And I get this final, like, and at the time I was in another relationship with another girl too. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I loved my foster dad and like, like, he was my real dad and I called him dad and everything. And, and he was a parent to me, just like my foster mom is. And I, that was someone so close to me that it broke me. Like it broke something inside of me that didn't come back for years, but it broke something inside of me. And I just got, I got heavier into drugs. I didn't want to cope. I didn't want to feel. I didn't want to feel nothing. And I bawled my eyes out for a week straight. I bawled and bawled. And I kept looking at her messages and the voicemail that he left me. And just, I replayed it. I replayed it over and over and over. And he's like, hey, baby girl. He's like, I'll see how, you know, like if her graduation, because he had another daughter and he was talking about, and I just kept replaying that, that exact video, thinking it was all a lie. And I would text him on his Facebook, like, I know you're not here, but it doesn't seem real that you're gone. Yeah.
And so right before my counselors, my, my counselors are saying, you're not going to graduate. You're going to be a second year. She even told me, she's like, you're gonna, if you don't get your grades up, I don't even think you can catch up your grades. Like I had teachers doubting me. They're like, you're going to fail. You're not going to graduate. You're going to have to be a second year senior. And I was like, no, I'm not. Those last three weeks, I really grind. I grind. I just focused in on all the pain that was going on. And I was getting my, I, I did my senior essay. I was catching up on my grades. I was getting all my grades up. I graduated. I passed every single class. And um, after my graduation, I just partied. And just my cousin ended up slipping me. Oh, I got in after after my graduation, I got into meth heavy and alcohol more heavier and my cousin has slipped me black tar heroin and he was trying to say oh i wouldn't give you nothing that's gonna hurt you but like me and him just got done smoking meth and drinking a 211 and walking freaking six miles and then he slipped me he slit me some black tar heroin and that drug was very addictive. It, it only took one time of use. We smoked it a couple of times that night. And then we walked back to my house. I snuck him in into where I was living. And um, that night after he left, I was going through withdrawals so bad that I was like shaking. And I had to lock myself in the room because I didn't know what he gave me. And I didn't look it up because I just was like trusting him. And... Uh, I had to, for three days, I didn't like go out the room because I was sweating and I was throwing up and I was like, why am I feeling like this? And it took one use. That's all it takes. Um, after that, still turning up, partying. Um, but yeah, I'm already 18. I'm going to end the video here. I still had, there was a lot that happened within that, within that two years, a lot. Uh, I'm only I only got into some things because you know we gotta do story times if you guys want to see other things. But I love y'all. Thank you so much for to listening to my childhood trauma. There's still much more, but I'm already an adult, so it's no longer childhood trauma. Now it's like, yeah, I'm still a teenager, but now I'm, it's more trauma while I'm an adult until I get older and older and older. So if you want me to still talk about the trauma even after I turned 18. Let me know. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have your own experiences with addiction, abuse, and R word, comment below. And I hope you know that you matter and you're enough and you're beautiful. And I hope you're able to heal from any of the trauma that you went through. It is very painful. And I know it's hard to talk to some people, but seek out friends who, can, who you can talk to and who can guide you in the right direction. I love y'all. Like and comment and share. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.